you're considering the purchase of a used Honda Goldwing. You know, you want the comfort and the style and the performance of the Goldwing, but you don't want to lay down twenty-five or thirty thousand dollars for a new bike. I'm Cruise Man, and this is the Cruise Man's Garage YouTube channel, and Goldwing is what we do here. Today I'm going to tell you what to look for when you're buying a used Goldwing, and more importantly, what to look out for. And that's coming up right now. One of the first videos I put out on YouTube back in 2012 was a tips on how to buy a used Goldwing. And since that time, almost half a million people have watched that video. I've received hundreds of emails from people who've used the tips in that video to help them buy their first Goldwing. But you know, a lot's happened since 2012. Honda's come out with some new models, brand new generations of Goldwings, and so there's new information that you may need to know about if you're shopping for a used Goldwing. Now, just a little bit of background on me. I've owned four different Goldwings. My first Goldwing I purchased used. The last three I purchased new. But I have some experience with Goldwings. I've ridden over 200,000 miles on Goldwings. And like I said before, I've owned four different ones. I also produce maintenance videos for the 2001 to current year model Goldwings. There are some advantages to buying a used Goldwing over a new Goldwing. The most obvious one is you're going to save some money. You know, when you go buy a new Goldwing and you ride it off the dealer lot, you're going to take a three to four thousand dollar depreciation hit just right up front. So you try to sell the bike a few weeks later, it's just not worth what you paid for it. You don't have that issue with a used Goldwing. Uh, you've let the previous owner or the initial owner take that depreciation hit. The second advantage is you get to benefit from any additional aftermarket accessories the previous owner may have put on the motorcycle. Aftermarket accessories typically don't really hold their value on resale. So you may get those accessories for a fraction of what you'd have to pay to have them put on a brand new bike. And of course, the last benefit is since it is a Goldwing, you don't have to worry too much about reliability. Buying a used Goldwing is probably the safest used motorcycle you could buy. Uh, Goldwing owners tend to take better care of their motorcycles uh, than some other brands or other types of motorcycles. For example, uh, if you're buying a sport bike or an adventure bike, you really don't know how that bike has been treated. But Goldwing owners tend to take better care of the motorcycle because they are a more costly bike. One of the first things you have to decide is if you're going to purchase from a dealer or from a private seller. Now, I don't particularly have a preference one way or the other. I think there's advantages and disadvantages to both. The advantages of buying from a dealer is they might have a choice of Goldwings for you to choose from. Uh, they might also be able to offer some sort of financing and maybe even some kind of service after the sale. And when you buy from a dealer, you're pretty confident the title is clean and clear. You don't have to worry about title issues. But there are some disadvantages to buying from a dealer. Dealers have markup in that bike, and they, they're going to want to make more money than if you bought it from a private seller. So they're trying to make a profit. It's also a little harder to negotiate with a dealer than it is a private seller. Uh, because these are so-called professional salespeople, and they do this every day, and they're not as motivated to sell as a private seller might be. So I think there are some advantages to buying from a private seller, and I certainly wouldn't hesitate to do so. Now, you can find used gold wings available on eBay or CycleTrader.com or even on Craigslist if you have somebody locally that's selling one. Um, but there are some advantages to buying from a private seller. First of all, you get a chance to meet the owner. You get to look him in the eye. You get to kind of know a little bit about him. And that tells you a lot about the type of person that owned the bike before you. And I think that's a big advantage. And it's an advantage you don't have if you buy from a dealer. So when you buy from a private seller, you get a chance usually to visit their home, see where the motorcycle was kept. Uh, you can kind of get a feel, a better feel for the care the motorcycle has had. Also, I think it's a lot easier to negotiate with a private seller. They're usually more motivated to sell, and if you know how to negotiate right, I think you can get a better deal with a private seller than you can with a dealer. 
Now, later in this video, I'm going to talk about some tips on negotiating. So make sure you watch till the end of the video. I'm also going to have some special offers for you at the end of the video as well. So let's talk about inspecting the motorcycle. When you go to the private seller's home, or even if you do this at a dealership, either way, you're going to want to take a look at the bike before you make the purchase. There may be some exceptions to that if the private seller lives out of town or out of state, but generally speaking, you'll go over to their home and you'll take a look at the bike. And the first thing you want to do is ask a few questions. I want to know if the motorcycle has ever been in an accident, uh, if it's been rear-ended, or you know, has, you know, what type of accident it's been in. Uh, and I probably would tend to shy away from buying a motorcycle that's been in an accident just because, especially if it had an impact with a car or a vehicle, because you never know what that could do to the frame. It could bend the frame, it could crack the frame, it could just cause all kinds of problems. Uh, the other thing I'd want to know is how the motorcycle has been maintained. So I'm going to ask to see service records. Uh, hopefully the owner has kept receipts from where he had the bike serviced, or if he did the service work himself, he might have kept a record. I keep a spreadsheet of everything I do to my motorcycle. You know, whether I change the oil or the air filters or the brake pads, I'm always keeping track of that. So that when I go to sell the bike, I can show that to the new owner. Um, I also want to know kind of where the bike has been kept. I want, I would only buy a garage kept Goldwing. I'm not interested in buying a motorcycle that's been left outside for extended periods of time. Uh, the sun and the just the environment itself can really do a lot of damage to rubber parts, plastic parts. Uh, it can cause plastic to become brittle and easily crack, and of course it can damage the paint. And uh, if you've ever seen a car that has those headlights that are really, really yellow, uh, that's from the sun. You know, it just causes a lot of damage to plastic parts. So me personally, I'm not buying a motorcycle unless I know it's been kept in a garage. Now, I'll start inspecting the bike by just kind of doing a walk around. Usually start at the front of the bike, and I start out by looking at the headlights, making sure the plastic is clear and, and relatively free of cracks or chips or scratches. Uh, headlights can be pretty expensive to replace on a Goldwing. Another quick tip is always take a notepad and a pen with you and take notes as you do the inspection on the motorcycle because you're going to use these things that you discover as part of your negotiation at the end of the inspection. I'm looking at the headlights. I want to make sure they're clear and they're clean. Headlights can be expensive to replace. A Goldwing headlight, fifth generation Goldwing, could be about $250 to $300, not including labor. If you have a 2018 plus Goldwing, a new headlight system is about $1250 to $1500. So these things are not cheap, so you need to be aware of that. I'll walk around and I'll check the, the dash, the clear uh, cover over the gauges or the meters to make sure it's not heavily scratched or fogged or uh, needs to be replaced. And then I'm just basically observing everything else on the motorcycle. I'm going to go down, I'm going to look at the saddlebags, I'm going to look at the trunk, I want to look at the paint, I want to look at all the plastic parts, see if there's any parts that are cracked or damaged or need replacement. And you want to make notes of all these things because plastic parts can be very expensive to replace on a Goldwing. And paint repair is very expensive as well. So if the paint is extremely faded or scratched or damaged, uh, those are costly repairs. Now, I would put in here that some people are not as concerned about the cosmetics on a motorcycle uh, as others. Some people just want to make sure it's mechanically sound. Um, some people don't care about paint, they care less about scratches, they care less about the windshield. Uh, those things are important to me, but they may not be to you, so take that into consideration. I also want to check the windshield and make sure it's not heavily scratched or damaged or fogged or crazed in any way. A new windshield will set you back about $300 on a Goldwing. So just be aware of the price of these things. Now if you see some uh, rock chips on the lower cowl, uh, that's kind of normal. Uh, little rocks and things will come up and hit that and chip off the paint. So I wouldn't be too concerned about that. That would be considered normal wear. But I also want to check the chrome on the mufflers and make sure there's not any or a lot of visible rust and make sure that the mufflers look like they're in good shape. Some people are concerned about whether or not the bike has been dropped. Uh, I would not personally be that concerned about that on a Goldwing. Uh, these are heavy motorcycles and it's not 
completely out of the norm for someone to drop the bike in a parking lot or in their garage. So these bikes will withstand that. So if, you know, Goldwing tips over, it has good protection to protect the engine and to protect the saddlebags and the painted parts in the event that that happens. So if the bike had been dropped, uh, I wouldn't be too concerned about that as long as it wasn't an accident where the guy was going 30 miles an hour and dropped the bike. That's a different set of circumstances. But if it tipped over and fell over in a parking lot or in his driveway, you know, that's not a huge deal. It wouldn't, that wouldn't concern me too much. Now, if you're looking at a 2001 to 2017 Goldwing, or what we call the fifth generation Goldwing, you would also want to look at those front fork tubes to see if there's any oily residue around the fork tubes, or uh, sometimes you'll see a little ring of dirt and oil. Uh, that's an indication that the fork seals are probably needing to be replaced. They're leaking. And uh, that can be uh, several hundred dollars to have done at a dealership. So uh, you might want to check those front fork tubes and make a note of that in your notes because you can always use this later on when it comes time to negotiate your price. Of course, you want to make sure you check all of the hand controls, all of the switches, all of the buttons. Make sure everything works. You want to turn the bike on and start the bike, and it should start up very quickly. Uh, Goldwing should not have to crank a long time before it starts. Uh, if it does take a long time, that's an indication there may be an issue. Uh, it should fire right up pretty quick and run smooth. So when the bike is on, you want to check all the lights, the headlights. If there's fog lights installed, you want to check those fog lights, make sure they're working. Uh, check the brake lights, make sure the turn signals are working. You just want to make sure all of the lights and the systems are functioning properly. Now, if there is a switch uh, that is not working properly, and if the bike is still covered under the Honda warranty, there's a possibility that Honda will replace that under warranty. So I wouldn't be too concerned about that. But uh, some other things, cosmetically, Honda's not going to fix under warranty. So be aware of that. I think it's a good idea that you check the oil in the Goldwing. You'll need to remove the little side cover on the fifth generation Goldwing. On the 2018 Plus Goldwing, uh, the dipstick is on the right side. It's right there on the engine. And usually have a paper towel and take the dipstick and just kind of wipe it on the towel to see how clean the oil is. If the oil looks fa fairly clean, uh, that's a good sign. Um, even if it's dark, you know, it may be in a while before the, the seller has changed the oil. But even if the oil is not completely clean and fresh, I wouldn't say that's a negative. The main thing you're looking for is if you see any milky looking oil on that dipstick. If the oil looks milky, uh, that's a sign that there's water getting into the oil from the engine, possibly a blown head gasket or some other issue. Uh, and I would walk away from that bike. I would not want to buy a motorcycle uh, that has that kind of level of issue. Uh, that's an expensive repair. So if you see any kind of milky substance on the dipstick, just walk away. Thank the guy for his time, walk away. The other thing you want to check is ABS brakes. Now that stands for anti-lock braking system. And on the fifth generation Goldwings, this was an option. It was not standard equipment. On the 2018 Plus Goldwing, it's standard equipment, so you don't have to worry about it. But a lot of times I've seen ads for motorcycles that say they have ABS. And in reality, I know they don't have ABS. So you want to check and make sure. You always want to look for the sensor ring on the wheel. Don't worry about that little sticker on the chrome cover. Uh, you can buy those stickers and put on there to make it look like it has ABS. What you want to look for is the ABS sensor ring on the wheel. If it has that sensor ring, then it has ABS. So what about aftermarket accessories? And do those things really add value to the motorcycle? Uh, yes and no. Uh, first of all, it's personal preference. If, if I'm buying a used motorcycle and it has a lot of stuff on it that I don't care about, then those aftermarket accessories have no value to me. So for example, if somebody's put a lot of chrome and uh, LED lights and things like that, I couldn't couldn't care less about that. Those things aren't important to me. I'm interested more in safety features, safety functions, um, comfort functions, things like that. So if the bike has highway pegs installed or a custom seat or traction suspension, something like that, to me that really adds value. Uh, but even then, it's maybe only worth 15 to 25 percent of the original cost. 
And I think most people understand that aftermarket accessories just do not retain their value. I've probably got five or $6,000 in aftermarket upgrades on this 2018 Goldwing. And when I go to sell it, I'd be lucky if I got $1,000 extra just for having all that stuff on there. So just be aware that if somebody is overvaluing those aftermarket accessories, you as the buyer need to be aware of that so that you don't overpay for the bike. So now if the motorcycle has something like a traction suspension upgrade from Traction Dynamics, I would consider that to be a pretty significant upgrade, uh, something that would have some value. And I would probably think that's worth an extra $1,000 uh, because that could be a $5,000 upgrade just for the traction suspension. Also, an extended warranty. If the motorcycle has the Honda extended warranty, I would consider that to have some value as well. Maybe $50 to $100 per year of extended warranty coverage. I would add no value if it was an aftermarket extended warranty from some other company besides Honda. But if it is a Honda factory extended warranty, uh, I would say that's a good value. Now let's talk about that warranty for just a second because the factory warranty for a Goldwing is 36 months or unlimited miles. So you don't have to worry about the miles. And it's 36 months from the original purchase date. So whenever the motorcycle was originally sold, that's when the clock starts ticking. So if you're buying a 2018 Goldwing right now, odds are pretty good it's still going to have the original three-year factory warranty. If you're buying a 2017 or 2016 Goldwing, it would probably have to be covered under the Honda Extended Warranty. And you can purchase the Honda Extended Warranty for any motorcycle as long as it's still covered under the original factory warranty. And the original factory warranty and or the extended warranty are both transferable to a new owner. So if the motorcycle is covered under the Honda warranty, you as the new owner will get to take advantage of that warranty. So those are things you need to be aware of. So if you're purchasing a motorcycle and it may have six months left of the original Honda factory warranty, you as the new owner have the ability to purchase the Honda extended warranty for that motorcycle. And if it's a 2018 or above, that can go from three, four, or five years of extended warranty coverage. And I highly recommend that you do that, especially if you're buying a 2018 model because it's the first year production of a brand new generation of Goldwing. Another thing you want to make sure to check is the title. You want to actually physically see the title from the previous owner. This is not a big deal if you're buying from a dealer, but if you're buying from a private seller, I'd want to take a look at the title. Now what you're looking for is you want to make sure the title is in their name. If it's not in their name, they probably don't have the right to transfer the title to you. So I would like to know it's in their name and I also want to make sure it's not a salvage title. Uh, if it's a salvage title, that means the bike was totaled and uh, the, maybe he bought it back from the insurance company and got a new salvage title issued and that means the bike has at some point been totaled, I'd walk away. You do not want to buy a motorcycle with a salvage title under any circumstances in my opinion. So now let's talk a little bit about negotiating for the price of a motorcycle. You've taken your notes, you've inspected the bike, you've gotten a chance to meet the owner, you kind of have a feel for his character and what you, how well you think he cared for the bike. And you've also hopefully been able to see the environment the motorcycle was kept in. So now it's time to sit down and negotiate. Unquestionably, he's already put a price on the bike of what he thinks it's worth. And I'm just going to use a, a random number. Let's say it's $15,000. Let's say he's asking $15,000 for the bike. But through your inspection, you can see it's going to take you maybe $1,000 to get the motorcycle into the condition that you expect it to be in. Maybe the bike needs new tires. You know, a set of Goldwing tires will run you $350 to $400 installed. And the tires are good for anywhere from 10 to 12,000 miles, generally speaking. So if his tires have 10,000 miles on them, you're probably going to need a new set of tires really soon. If they only have 5,000 miles on them, then I wouldn't be too concerned about it. I think that's probably a good, you know, a good tire to, to ride off on and not have to expect to buy new tires anytime soon. 
But, you know, if the air filter hadn't been changed in 25,000 miles or 20,000 miles, that's something you're going to have to factor in. So these are just the, the, the reasons you do the inspection is to add all this up. Maybe there's a headlight that's damaged and you're going to need to replace it. Uh, you know, maybe there's brake pads that need to be replaced. So considering all that, you come up with a price in your head that you feel comfortable with and be willing to walk away if you can't come together on price. There's a lot of gold wings out there for sale on the used market. So this is not the only one available. There's quite a few of them out there. You should be able to find the one you're looking for at a good price. Now, another thing to remember when you're negotiating as a buyer, cash is king. I can't emphasize this enough. I always take cash with me when I'm going to look at a used motorcycle. And if the owner's asking $15,000 for the bike, I'll probably take $14,000 in cash with me. And I have a price that I'm not going to go over no matter what. And it's pretty hard for a seller to turn down a cash offer. If you're willing to lay the money down right there, uh, that's a pretty compelling argument. Uh, and it puts you in a really strong negotiating position. Of course, a bank draft is the second best option. He could always draft your bank for the money if need be. Now, when it comes to transacting the deal, I usually won't go look at a motorcycle unless it's during the week. Uh, and here's why. I like to transact these deals at a bank. So once I've decided to purchase the motorcycle and we've agreed on a price, uh, I want to make sure I have a bill of sale filled out, ready to go. Now the seller should have that. If not, you can always take your own and I'll put a link to one in the description of this video so you can uh, fill it in and use it if you want to have it with you when you go to transact the deal. Uh, I go to the bank so they can notarize the bill of sale and they can uh, check the title and everything and also they can count the cash to make sure it's legitimate and then count the money and give it to the seller. So I usually transact the deal and then I ride off on the motorcycle, everybody's happy. I've sold three, four gold wings, uh, no, three gold wings uh, and that's how we did every deal. person usually came in from out of town, they looked at the bike, once we did the deal we went to the bank and we transacted the deal, got everything notarized, sealed, signed, and delivered. They rode off on the motorcycle, happy as can be. So that's how I like to do the deal. Now what about after you've bought the motorcycle and you take it home, what's the first thing you're going to want to do? Me personally, I'm going to want to make sure the bike has fresh oil and an oil filter. Uh, I want to make sure all the major uh, bolts are tightened properly. Uh, I just like to go over the whole motorcycle and just make sure it's clean and uh, you know everything is where it should be. Uh, I will also maybe consider a new air filter, uh, new brake pads. I want to get the bike in good riding condition. Now if you go to a dealer and have some of these basic things done like a new air filter, new brake pads, new brake fluids, um, and oil and filter change, you could be looking at five, six hundred dollars uh, to have that done at a dealership. Now I'm going to tell you how you can do that yourself using my Goldwing maintenance videos and you'll save all of those labor charges. You could probably do the whole thing for maybe around a hundred to hundred ten dollars if you do it yourself. So you'd save four or five hundred dollars in labor uh, just by doing these jobs yourself at home with pretty simple tools. So thousands of Goldwing owners around the world are using my maintenance videos to help them work on their own bike. And so I'm going to make a little little bit of a plug here for those maintenance videos because I think it's one of the first things you're going to want to get for your new Goldwing because it's going to save you a ton of money over uh, on dealer labor charges over the life of that motorcycle. These videos will more than pay for themselves the first time you use them. So I highly recommend it. The videos are available on demand through Vimeo.com. You can watch them as often or as much as you like in a streaming format, or you can even download the videos to your computer or your iPad or your phone to watch them offline. It's totally up to you. You pay for them one time and you're done. You don't, there's no ongoing subscription. And you automatically get new videos and updates as they come out. Since you've watched this video all the way through to the end, which I really do appreciate because I know it's a long video, I'm going to make you a special deal. I'm going to show you how you can save 20% off of the cost of those maintenance videos just by using a special promo code that I'm going to put up on the screen.
So make sure you write down this special promo code and when you purchase the videos through Vimeo.com and we will put the link in the, in the description of this video where you can purchase these maintenance videos, you're gonna, not only going to save money on the labor when you do the tasks yourself, but you're going to save money on purchasing the videos. Writing a used Goldwing is better than writing no Goldwing at all. So get out there and find yourself a good used Honda Goldwing, and I will see you out there on the road. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, and I'd appreciate if you subscribe to my channel and click that little bell icon. It'll let you know when we put new YouTube videos up. Thanks again for watching us today on Cruise Man's Garage.